Greetings in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, welcome to the very first Greater Works podcast. Uh, during these times where we're uh, quarantined or staying in a home, I thought, what better time when I actually have the time to begin to speak and bring these podcasts so people can have something to listen to on their phones, their computers, or maybe even when they're driving uh, down the road. Uh, I want to talk to you today about faith, and I would title the message, Faith as I see it. It will be a few podcasts because these won't be that long. But I, I want to encourage you that the Bible portrays that we serve a God that's so much more than just a Sunday morning sermon or a small group meeting. I uh, commonly say to people, if you're telling me you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, then why isn't something supernatural happening to you, through you, or around you? He's not the great I was, he's the great I am, and he's still doing great things. Another scripture that I know you've heard and I love so much is he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what you read about that he did in the Bible as he brought breakthroughs and deliverances for people, he doesn't love that first century church more than he loves us. He's not a respecter of people as long as those that fear and honor him. Let's start with the scripture that you know and we all know, Hebrews 11.6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not occasionally, not just on Sunday only, but those that diligently seek him. Ask yourself a question. Am I diligently seeking him? Am I seeking him fervently? Am, am I making it a process? Is it first? Is it second? Or is it at the end of the day when I'm all done and everything's out? I want to learn to be able to give my first fruits to him, my first time, the first part, not just of my finances, but every part of my life. So I guess I'm saying, so in order to communicate, to relate to God in his kingdom, we need to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. And without faith, it's impossible to communicate with him. So during these podcasts, we're going to be asking some questions. Where do we get faith from? What fuels faith or activates it, makes it work or run? And what hinders faith? Let's go to another scripture in the wonderful word of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man, and that includes woman, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So he says, don't think, oh, I've got greater faith or this faith. It's just rather have you learned to use your faith. See, you can have faith there that's dormant, that's laying, that's just waiting for you to direct your faith toward God. If you direct it toward uh, the lust of your flesh, it won't work. If you direct it toward getting something that's not God's will for you, it won't work. Faith begins where the will of God is made known. We find the will of God in the word of God and when we read that, our faith will jump and get excited and say, hey, so that's God's will for me. Now I know where to take like a marksman with a rifle and point my faith on what I've received as the will of God from the word of God. Now that also involves timing. Uh, I've got little grandkids. They'd love to drive my truck, but they're not old enough. They don't have a license. They don't have no experience. Even though I want them to one day to have their driver's license and do this, it's a matter of timing and them going through the maturing process. We have to do the same thing. So some things depend also upon maturing and upon time. Hebrews, we're still in the same book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hmm. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, if you've asked Jesus to come inside you, and he's the creator of the author of faith and the finisher of faith, I always jokingly say, but there's a seriousness to it too, that sounds like you have a faith factory inside you. You've got no excuse to say, Oh, I don't have the faith that Brian has. No, you don't have your faith working to the degree maybe I do. But we read just a second ago, God has dealt to every man and woman the same, the measure of faith. 
Take your faith. Be a good steward of that. Protect it. Don't let people speak doubt and tell you God doesn't do this anymore. God doesn't do that. You know, who you hang with will determine how far you'll go in life. And uh, I make sure that if I'm not with giant killers or champions, it's only because I'm ministering to them. But I don't hang with people in just regular, normal conversation that would be able to bring me down. Now, the devil will assign people. You have same hobbies. You might scuba dive, fly planes, go hunting, do all these things together, but they have no desire for the kingdom, and you do. They uh, don't believe in tongues. They don't believe in tithing. They don't believe in, in the miracles and the supernatural gifts of God, but you do. So the Bible said, don't be unequally yoked. And yes, I tell you what, I would rather let a friend go and walk away from someone if I saw they were going to be an assignment of the enemy, without them even knowing it, they could be an assignment against us. Sometimes uh, when we suffer rejection, if we really had our eyes open, we'd see that uh, we had been delivered. So we have a faith factory inside of us. Faith is holy and must be protected. Now, that's exactly what I'm talking about there, of watching who you hang with and who you listen to. Now, faith is holy and it must be protected. You know, God's Bible which people have and everyone owns probably multiple ones, but not everybody is a student of the Bible. They listen to their pastor and there are hearsay, what I call hearsay uh, uh, Christians. They live their life by what they hear, but actually studying and researching and getting in the Bible. I tell you, if you would, and that's just because see that the, the, the spirit realm communicates to us through our thought life. And I'll bet you you've had some thoughts. Well, I just don't understand the word. Luke 24, 45 says he opened, the, these Jewish two guys, he opened their understanding to understand the scripture. Pray that prayer. Luke 24, 45, look that up. Look at that. These are Jewish people who had been in the word, raised in the word, had to memorize the word. They didn't even understand about the resurrection. Do you understand about the resurrection? The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Sit down with the author of the Bible and say, Holy Spirit, I honor you, I welcome you. Help me to understand this. He will take your faith and ignite it and anoint it. And you can jump from the measure of faith to the gift of faith if he so chooses. And you can see some great things happening through your life. God's word is like a love letter to us. Now, let me tell you something about faith. Faith is almost like a vehicle that we drive from the natural realm into the spirit realm. Take what we need and drive it back. So for driving it like a vehicle then I want to share with you that faith needs fuel. Listen to this scripture. It's so interesting to me. Galatians 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. I love that scripture, because that's telling me the Jews aren't better than us, and we're not better than them, because some say that they've done away with the Jews, and it's all Gentiles now, and some try to act like the Jews are better than us. No. We're all in faith in Christ. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You know, that's why the two greatest commandments is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Faith works by love. That's what the scripture says there in Galatians 5, 6. To me, that means I have this understanding, I believe has been revealed to me, Love is the fuel of faith. Love that you and I can uh, come up with would be like a, the lowest level of fuel. And when you got a really nice car, if you run un, uh, unleaded low, low uh, fuel in it, it'll knock and ping and it doesn't run and the, the fuel injectors will get gummed up and it's not good. I run high test and premium in all of my, my motorcycle, uh, my truck, my wife's van. I run, you know, and maybe it's 10 cents more or something, but I'd rather have those fuel injectors. Well, that's kind of like our love. Our love has conditions. You do this, I'll do this. But God has unconditional love, which is high test, which will activate and run your faith cleaner. Well, well, if that's so, you're asking, how do I get this faith? I'm glad you're asking. I'm glad you're asking, how do you get this love to fuel the faith? Well, we talked about God gives the faith, but it also says that he sheds abroad in our heart, love. That's the love. He didn't give it to us just for ourselves, but he gave it to us so that we could 
love the world, and be obedient. I'll see you next time. God bless.